Hey, hey, party people. I'm back. I'm back from Japan. I was gone for three weeks. I am finally starting to film things in the studio and get caught up on projects. Did you miss me? Of course you miss me. Like, if you don't, if you didn't miss me, why are you watching this? Mm, go away. Actually, what I do tell my students is if you have time to miss me, you haven't been working hard enough. Have you been practicing? Of all the things that I posted on Instagram, the thing you guys were most excited about was my visit to the art supply store. Not that I blame you, it was definitely a highlight of my trip. I went to three different art supply stores. I only posted about one, but the first one I went to is Sakaido, and it is five floors of... beauty well-organized stuff to the gills beauty you know they say disneyland is the magic kingdom and i beg to differ no i'm i'm gonna go with sakaido i also went to a store called tokyo hands now tokyo hands is more of a department store it has eight nine nine eight floors of just everything in your life that you didn't know that you desperately needed but now that tokyo hands has shown it to you you know you absolutely need it everything from kitchen wares to luggage to origami and stationery art supplies sewing supplies cosmetics it was funny because i went to tokyo hands and i bought the weirdest assortment of things i got fans you guys know how i feel about sweating mm. i'm attractive um i went and bought these special like look i bought these special low-cut socks I got, uh, this weird kind of and then I got markers. And then I went to Uematsu. Uematsu is uh, more old school and they sell a lot of traditional pigments along with markers and paints. And so I went to three different stores and I bought 850 million bajillion things. My guiding principle was is this readily available in the US? Can I easily get it on the internet? You know, that kind of thing. Because yeah, you can get a lot of stuff on the internet now, but is the shipping gonna be super insane? And you know, the thing is, is I shop for art supplies in person and online a lot. And so if I've never seen something before, or I thought something was super expensive online, and it was cheaper or brand new to me at the store, I can't get it. Something, something, whatever, insert empty justification for buying all the pretty things here. I mean, let's be real. Like, Japan is full of so many pretty things, you guys, and pretty people with, like, just a personal, like, an average personal style. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are people in Japan who have no personal style, okay? But, like, just the national average is elevated. It's just, wow, the people watching was epic right and books and art supplies and just everything is pretty okay even their freaking taxi cabs are pretty do you know how many photos i took of their taxi cabs i'm serious i took a lot of pictures of their taxi cabs their colors remind me of like all the old retro colors i used to use when i used to do a bunch of t-shirt graphics for vespa i promised you guys this haul video because that's what you guys were most excited about and so this is supposed to be a haul video if i can just ever stop talking ah hmm so let's start with markers everyone's like oh when you get to japan you have to buy copics because every copics are so much cheaper and they are they're totally cheaper but uh you know if you've watched my intro to markers video then you know that the way i like to buy markers is by project like I have the fabrics that I need to render for a project and then I will go and get markers that match those colors and then the shadow colors for those fabric colors and then if I'm changing a skin tone into something that I don't have yet I'll buy that skin tone so I buy per basis so I didn't, I kinda, I didn't really feel like oh I'm gonna just go buy a bunch of Copics and hope I use them in the future Okay. So what I did get is a full set of the cool grays. Copic has like cool gray, tonal gray, warm gray. Like they have a bunch of grays. But I got the cool gray set because I don't have any of these. I have some warm grays, but I don't have any cool grays. And one of the things I like about Copics is they don't have just... 10%, 20%, 30 to 90% gray. They have a lot more. They have a double zero gray 
Okay. So I'm expecting, I'm expecting something super subtle. They have a zero gray before they even get to one gray. And then they go all the way to 10 gray, which is kind of misleading because at this point, this is kind of like what, 12 gray. And then there's a black. I already have their special black, so I didn't get that. And I got a colorless blender and I don't typically like using colorless blenders, but I've never tried a Copic colorless blender, so I thought, why don't I try that out? So I got one of those. So I got the full range. I'm excited to try these out, and I use grays constantly, so I know for sure that this was a good deal because I'm going to use them all the time. On the other spectrum of buying markers, I picked up three sets of markers where I had never, ever, ever heard of the brand before in my life. And so I got three sets so that I could try them out. One of them is this Marvi Le Plume. Totally mispronouncing that, I'm sure. And I bought this set because in this set it has two greens, two blues, two purples, etc, etc. They look like they're the same color, but there's one shade up. So I could potentially use that as like a fabric and a shadow color like that. And they're cute, they're fat, they're single tip, but they're nice brush. They call it an ultra soft brush tip. And then this is SM Trading Color Master. Also, never heard of these. And these are, um, I got this because it looked like a nice kind of skin tone, blush color, hair color, kind of color story that I would have a lot of use for. And they have a brush tip and an extra fine tip. Never heard of these, never used these before. So I just got like a little, the smallest kit that they had. I'm super excited to try these out. And then again, this brand I've never heard of before, Deleter Neo Pico 2. And I got a set of grays here as well, because as you know, I use tons of grays. And adorable kitty logo. Can't go wrong. Made in Japan. In the future, I am going to be doing a video on metallic media because this is a question I get a lot, especially in person. And I'm actually curious as well because I have dabbled in a few metallics. I use metallic ink sometimes. I've had some good success with metallic Sharpies, but there's a lot of metallics out there that I want to explore. And so I am slowly testing products to prepare for that metallics roundup. So I also picked these up. This is Staedtler, which is a brand I see around, but I don't think I've seen the metallic markers before. So I picked these up. Oh, what else did I get? So many things. Okay. As you know, uh, when it comes to paints, my favorite paint of choice for illustration work are gouache because I can use it opaquely and I can use it watered down and sheer like watercolor. And I've been using Winsor & Newton designer gouache forever. It was what I was introduced to in college and I've never heard of anything that was fantastically better in the States and I've had very good results from it. So I never felt the need to go out and look around. But I found all these gouache sets at Sakaido, so I decided to pick these up. Holbein is a brand I've heard of before. Their watercolors are very popular and highly lauded, but I've never heard much about their gouache. So I picked up a little set. How adorable are these? Okay. I mean, I got the, the smallest set with the fewest colors because I just want to test them out, right? And as you know, because of the pigments and chemicals needed to create each different color, all the different colors are going to behave a little bit differently. And so I wanted to actually try a bunch of colors. So I got the like miniature sets as opposed to picking up full size tubes. And then this one, from what I can tell, is a Japanese brand called Knicker. Um, you know, everything is in Japanese and it looks like they have an office in Tokyo and they have a gouache set. And again, I got the smallest one that they had and I am eager to try these out because I don't know anything about them. It seems to me that acrylic gouache 
is much more popular in Japan because when I was looking for gouache, I saw lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of acrylic gouache. Sometimes they call it acrylic gouache. Sometimes they call it acrylic gouache. Um, I don't have any experience with acrylic gouache, so I kind of stayed away from that for now. But um, I was given a small set as a gift a while ago, so I'm going to look into that eventually. And then this one, again, from what I can tell a Japanese brand, you know, don't quote me. I don't know for sure. I didn't research it. But this one is called Opaque Watercolor, which that's what gouache is, right? So I went and bought a set of these, okay, 12 colors. And so a lot of them have the same colors like, you know, cadmium red, light green, dark green, Prussian blue, black, white. And so I think I'll have some fun being able to compare the results. Do not expect a paints comparison results video anytime soon because I bought so much stuff. I don't even know how I'm going to get around to everything. I know the problems I have in my life. My life is so hard. Woe is me. Pity me, my students. Blah, blah, blah. All right. This makes me so happy. It's not even funny. Okay? I was looking for a portable way to carry water for painting. And... I found this in Japan. It's plastic, so it weighs nothing. It does not leak. I carried this for three weeks all over Japan, did not leak once. And it's got this clip and you can like slide it onto your palette or the edge of your book or whatever. And it just stays. Oh my God. Whoever came up with this, genius right here. Mm. I just picked this brush up because it was pretty. And I liked that it had a fat handle, even though it was such a skinny brush. And then I picked this novelty thing up. <laughs> I got this at Uematsu. It's a finger painting brush. So that's just the lid. And you stick your finger in here and you paint. And I have no idea how successful this is gonna be, but hi, like when you see this and you're a painting teacher, do you not get one of these just to see what happens? I can't wait. These are, as far as I can tell, because, you know, I speak two words Japanese, okay? Thank you and excuse me. And as far as I can tell, they are brush pen markers. Like their ink is similar to that of markers, but they're brush pens, I think. These are water-based. I know that because it says so right here in English. And I don't really know what's going on here at all. But I find that incredibly exciting. I don't know what's going on at all. I have to figure it out on my own. So I grab neutrals because, you know, you use neutrals more than you use, like, say, neon green. So I grabbed a couple of browns, warm browns, and some cooler browns. And a is this black? No, this is very dark brown. Okay. Of two different kinds. I'm super stoked to try these out. I don't know if there's anything that I could compare it to to anything I have in my kit, but if there, if I find a comparison, I will let you know. Just know that my inner art supply geek is leaping for joy at the prospect of trying these out. Calm down, Zoe. Whew. And then in the thread of buying things to test out metallics, I bought these two, which look like metallic brush pens there's no english here at all that's not a complaint it's a japanese thing so why would there be english i bought it in japan for god's sakes and then these which look like the water pens except instead of water there is a metallic gold and silver ink and it looks like it's supposed to be for calligraphy and i am super stoked to try these out I bought this eraser because my indigo teacher said that this was a bomb ass eraser and um, he is wise about everything so far. So yeah. Yes. And my fingers, my fingernails are still blue from all the indigo dyeing. Like it's mostly off my skin. You see a little bit here and there, but my nails decided to soak it up like a sponge. Now, these are just Caran d'Ache oil pastels that I picked up because they were super, super cheap. 
permanent wax oil pastels in white and red and i bought these because right before i left for japan as you know i uploaded that um guest fashion illustration tutorial with brianna kranz and she showed us that cool technique of applying the oil pastel and then painting on top and then the watercolor um doesn't cover the oil pastel because they don't play well together and all that good stuff and how we can play around with that and i have been obsessed with that technique ever since she showed it to us and i had made plans to kind of play around with that and see how uh i could apply it to the kind of illustrations that i teach if you have watched a bunch of my rendering tutorials you know that i like to use a tiny bit of opaque white gouache for all kinds of detail work i like to use them for sequins i like to use use them for like touches of highlight, little highlight in the eyeball, ting, little sparkle crosses for sparkly things like beading and sequins, all that kind of stuff. And so I was saw these. I have no idea their chemical makeup or anything. All I know is that it's white paint. It appears to be opaque. There are adorable kitties on it. And, uh, yeah, I thought how awesome would it be if we could work with an opaque white paint that sits on top of our, the papers that we use and we don't have to whip out our palettes in white gouache every single time. I have no idea what the difference is between the two, but they weren't very expensive. So I picked up both and also kitties. Look, kitties. Oh my God. I bought a lot of stuff. As you know. I mean, unless this is your very first video you're watching of mine. Hello, new people. Okay. I use a lot of mechanical pencils. I use a different lead widths, and I use a lot of different lead softnesses to get the effects that I want, so I end up having a dozen mechanical pencils. And it's hard, aka impossible, to find soft leads in this very skinny lead in the U.S., I've not seen it so far. I've seen B. I've not seen 2B. So I picked these up for my 0.3 pencils. And then as I was shopping at these leads, I found a 0.2 lead pencil, y'all. It's so skinny that they recommend you use it while it's still in the metal casing, not sticking out very much at all. Oh my God. And then I picked up three different lead softnesses for this pencil super teeny tiny detail work for super tiny detailed stuff and then i picked up these erasers that will help me with my super teeny tiny detailed stuff this is a very skinny wide eraser that i've actually seen some of my asian students use in class that i had been secretly not so secretly coveting and then this one which is just this size it's small, you know, it's like a fine tip marker size. And I'm pretty excited about these as well. And then to wrap up, I want to show you just a couple of books I bought. I bought a bunch of books. I'm not going to go over all of them because that will take seven hours. Okay. But this one is on Boro and Boro is not that well known in the U.S. Boro is as best as I can describe it. Patchwork elevated to an art. And so this is all about taking garments, wearing them, and repairing them with patches of other fabrics and continuing in this vein using cool stitching methods, using cool fabrics. And then as things get worn and holy you patch more fabric on top that's boro and boro results in these beautiful I don't know if you guys are aware of the repair manifesto, but 
I'm a big believer in repairing your clothes instead of tossing it out at the the first sign of fraying or holing. And the Japanese have taken repairing garments to an elevated art form. So I recommend you research that a little bit. I went and checked out the Isemiyaki exhibit in Tokyo and it's closed now, but I highly encourage you guys to check out his work. I believe that he is so underrated and because the genius behind his work is not easily translated to runway, I believe that he's been eclipsed by his peers like Yoji Yamamoto and Reiko Kubo at Comme des Garçons, but his work is incredible you guys and his understanding of the body and fabric and you know these are all like if you look at these this is the garment folded up and then when it opens up it looks like this where's my favorite one when i saw this my jaw just dropped okay in the exhibit on the platform you see just this blue circle with these straps and then you see this mannequin and it's wearing the dress so you pick up the straps and as you pick it up and as it raises off the floor you see this dress take shape it's like wow are you kidding and all these garments in similar ways this is what it looks like completely folded and then when you open it up there's that when you open this up there's that oh i am dying of course, his pleats work is amazing. The textures, the shape, you know, pushing the sculptural element in our clothes, just <coughs> unreal. Varying degrees of wearability. Playing with textures, referencing Japanese crafts this dress also blew me away because it is this sort of strange looking flat piece of fabric with just strategically placed snaps and one leather strap with another snap and you get this you snap them in place and you get this dress <sighs> all right so and then of course you know the infamous isimiyaki red corset so I do encourage you guys to research this brilliant designer. And then as you know, you know, I did a bunch of touristy things and I did do a 10 day indigo textile workshop. And this book is the complete Japanese tie dyeing workbook. And if you are, if you followed me on Instagram and you are, were curious as to what the hell I was doing and how to do some of these techniques that I was showing you guys. This is a fantastic book. And there are so many photos of how to do things that I don't think that the English, you know, I don't think that it being in Japanese should be a huge deterrent. Okay. This is a fantastic book full of awesome photographs so if you are into the shibori uh things that i was instagramming i highly encourage you guys check this book out that's it that's my haul i mean that's the haul that i you know would probably interest you i got some cool shoes i got some kimono i got some hats i just thought the shopping is good yo I will be back to my regular shooting schedule very soon. Subscriber request Sundays will start on schedule this coming Sunday. And then whatever I want Wednesdays will be on schedule the Wednesday after this coming Sunday. Thank you for all your cute notes uh, and comments left on my channel while I was gone. I tried very hard to keep up but with, you know, limited internet time and Wi-Fi. Uh, I hope... I got back to everybody, but let me know if you still have a burning question and uh, I will see you next time.